morning, clarinets. This is Mrs. Becker, the band director from Hudson Middle School, and today I want to talk to you about the parts of your instrument. First, I wanna make sure you know the correct way to open your case so that you don't do that improperly and have the pieces of your instrument uh, roll out and break. Your case should have an emblem on the front this emblem always points towards the ceiling, and when you set your case down, you want to do it on a very stable surface, like a table or the floor, but not ever in your lap. The other thing that's important to note is the handle on your case needs to be closest to the floor. That way you'll know that your case is pointing the right direction when you go to open it. Then lift the latches on your case and open the lid. Next, I would encourage you to take a picture of your case right after you've opened the lid so that when you start to put your pieces back into your case, you know exactly where they go and which direction they need to point to make sure that you don't damage your instrument when you put it away. Now let's talk about the parts of your instrument from the bottom to the top. The bottom of your instrument is called the bell because it looks like a bell, ring a ling a ling That's your bell. The next part of your instrument is called the bottom joint. Some people also call it the lower joint. It has one cork. The cork is the brown part that goes around the bottom, and this is called your bottom joint or your lower joint. It has three open tone holes. It also has pinky keys that you'll press with your right pinky, and more pinky keys that you'll press with your left pinky. The whole thing is called the lower joint or the bottom joint. And it has one cork. Oh, one thing. On the back of the lower joint, there is a little piece that sticks out. This is called your thumb rest. I have a fancy little cushion on mine to make it cute. Next, you have your top joint, also called your upper joint. This part has two corks. You always know it's the top joint because it has two corks. T for two, T for top, also known as the upper joint. This one also has three open tone holes. It has keys that stick off on the side that you'll press with your first finger. It has keys up here on the top that you'll press with your first finger. And on the back, it has one open tone hole for your thumb and one special key on the back called the register key. The other important part about your top joint or your upper joint is this one piece that sticks out and hovers kind of over your corks. This is called the bridge key. It's the bridge because it connects the top joint and the bottom joint or the upper joint and the lower joint together. This is a very fragile piece of your instrument and you're gonna pay really close attention to it when, you when we teach you how to put it together. Next is the barrel. The barrel goes on top of your top joint. It looks like a little mini barrel. One end of your barrel is thinner than the other. The top of it is smaller than the bottom, the barrel. Next, you have your mouthpiece. Your mouthpiece has a cork around the bottom. Your mouthpiece has one flat side. The flat side also has an opening. Okay, the flat side has an opening. And then you have a non-flat side that is angled. Okay, pay a close attention. Remember, the mouthpiece has a flat side with an opening and a non-flat side. This is the mouthpiece. Then you'll have something called a ligature. Mine is made of leather. Yours might be made of metal. Mine has one screw. Yours might have two screws. The ligature goes on top of your mouthpiece and will hold your reed into place. This again is called your ligature, ligature. Some of you might have a mouthpiece cap that can go on top of your mouthpiece and ligature to protect the tip of your mouthpiece. I would keep close track of this because it can be really important to keep your instrument safe. And lastly, you'll have reeds. You might have a whole box of them. You might have just a few, um, but the reed is one of the most important parts because it makes the sound when it vibrates against your instrument. 